Hello everyone, I'm Naoki Shinohara, professor of Kyoto University, Japan. Today, uh, I'm, very, uh, I'm very glad to be here and I would like to introduce our technology, Japanese technology towards a solar power satellite. So US people uh, always call it SBSP, space-based solar power, but uh, we Japanese always use uh, the solar power satellite, SPS. And uh, today's my talk title is a recent advance of beam wireless power transfer for SPS in Japan. Uh, please enjoy my talk. This is a conceptual image of the SPS. SPS is a very huge satellite and a power station in space. Uh, it will generate over one gigawatt uh, electricity and uh, generated uh, electricity uh, will be transmitted to the ground via microwave or laser. And uh, the satellite SPS uh, will be in uh, GEO, geostationary geo orbit, and uh, it is uh, 36,000 kilometers above. And the uh, important technology of the SPS is a uh, phased array antenna technology for wireless power transfer. And uh, as you know, uh, we can control the beam direction uh, with a phase array antenna. And uh, through 36,000 kilometers, uh, we have to concentrate the microwave beam uh, to the uh, detected uh, target on the ground. And uh, we estimated the number of antenna elements in the phase array antenna. Uh, the size of the antenna will be over two kilometers. And uh, in Japan, uh, we designed the solar power satellite with 5.8 gigahertz. It means uh, uh, wave ratio, uh, uh, waves, uh, wave length uh, is approximately five centimeters only. And uh, so we estimated the number of antenna, uh, number of antenna elements uh, will be over uh, 7.3 billions. So it's very huge number, but uh, uh, only the problem uh, to develop the, such a huge phase array antenna is just a size problem only. Uh, if we have a good mass production process, uh, it's easy to build uh, uh, such a large uh, phase array antenna with a uh, uh, large number of antenna elements. And uh, through 36,000 kilometers, kilometers uh, we have to concentrate the microwave, uh, microwave beam to the target on the ground. And uh, required beam accuracy uh, will be below 0 0.0003 degrees. Uh, it depends on the distance and the uh, size of the uh, antenna. And uh, this uh, required beam accuracy, 0 0.0003 degree, is very, very uh, accurate. Num uh, accurate. But uh, as, I told, as I told you, uh, we have a, a very huge number of antenna elements. And uh, uh, theoretically, uh, this uh, beam accuracy can be uh, calculated uh, with this equation. And uh, it depends on the uh, number of elements and uh, phase, phase errors uh, in each antenna element. So uh, it's easy to calculate and uh, we can uh, realize uh, such a very accurate number for beam accuracy. And uh, this is uh, important parameters. Uh, 36,000 kilometers is very, very long distance, but uh, it uh, is in Fresnel region, radiative near field region. Uh, as you know, uh, uh, the train between Fresnel region and the Fraunhofer region, uh, radiative near field and uh, far field uh, can be uh, calculated uh, by this antenna. Uh, 2d uh, square over lambda. And uh, from this uh, calculated detrain, uh, 36,000 kilometers and uh, two kilometer, uh, with two kilometers uh, antenna diameter, uh, we can get the detrain will be uh, about one, 100,000 kilometers. And uh, it means uh, 36,000 kilometers is in Fresnel region with such a huge uh, antenna, uh, antenna size. So this is a very important point. Uh, 
it means uh, we can concentrate the uh, uh, theoretically 100% uh, microwave power to the receiver. And uh, in this SPS system, uh, we have to consider the uh, beam forming in Fresnel region, radiative near field region. Uh, I will explain later. And uh, I think uh, we Japanese have a long history to develop the uh, variable technology for solar power satellites. It, it includes a microwave power transfer. And uh, I think uh, we have three advantages of the technology uh, for SPS in Japan. One is uh, experience of the MPT experiment in space. Uh, approximately 40 years ago, uh, my boss, my supervisor, uh, uh, carried out the world's first uh, space microwave power transfer experiment in Japan. Uh, he uh, adopted the magnetron system and uh, mother daughter uh, rocket, separated rocket system. And uh, in 150 kilometers above, uh, mother and daughter rocket uh, was separated and uh, uh, he uh, transmitted the microwave power from the magnetron uh, from the uh, daughter rocket to the, uh, sorry, mother rocket to the daughter rocket. And uh, we measured some counter uh, effect uh, from the hyper microwave into, uh, in the space plasmas and uh, it was very uh, successful. Uh, experiment. And uh, 10 years later, from the 1983, uh, my boss uh, carried out the second uh, microwave power transfer experiment in space. And uh, it is named the ISI METS and uh, Microwave Energy Transmission uh, in Space in International Space Year. And uh, in this uh, system, uh, we adopted the phased array antenna system. Uh, I think this is a world first. Uh, space experiment uh, with phased array. And uh, of course, uh, it also uh, succeeded. And uh, the other professor in Japan, uh, Professor uh, Nobuyuki Kaya, uh, he succeeded in the uh, succeeded in third rocket experiment. And uh, he collaborated with ESA, European Space Agency, and uh, uh, in space. Uh, very large, uh, si uh, large parabolic antenna was uh, expanded, and uh, from uh, expanded antenna, he transmitted the microwave power to the ground. Uh, of course, unfortunately, uh, received the power on the ground is was very very tiny, and but uh, this is a world first uh, experiment uh, of the microwave power transfer from the space to ground. So uh, we Japanese had has uh, these uh, three uh, space or rocket experiment of the microwave power transfer. And the second advantage, uh, Japanese advantage is uh, uh, R&D of the phased array and uh, semiconductor technology, I think. Uh, in 1992, uh, we succeeded in the world first uh, phased array uh, microwave power transfer experiment uh, in Japan. Uh, this uh, experiment, uh, in this experiment, uh, we could fly uh, the drone. A drone is a, a small airplane. Uh, we could fly the small airplane uh, with a phased array uh, technology. And uh, through the 30 years, uh, we keep R&D uh, to develop the phased array and a new semiconductor for the micro power and for SPS. Uh, it's very good uh, experience. And the uh, third point is a uh, new uh, SPS system design. Uh, we Japanese sometimes uh, designed the uh, SPS system. Uh, 30 years ago, uh, we designed the first one. And uh, in parallel, uh, Japanese professors uh, designed the mid-size uh, SPS uh, uh, named the uh, uh, SPS 2000. Uh, this is a very uh, well-designed uh, experimental SPS. And uh, around the 2000, uh, 2000 uh, 2004, and, and uh, in 2006, uh, two, uh, two Japanese group uh, designed the uh, very interesting uh, solar power satellite formation pride, uh, formation pride uh, SPS, 
and uh, tether type SPS. And uh, based on this uh, system design, uh, we had uh, r and uh, project uh, to develop the phase array and the semiconductor. So I think uh, we Japanese have a good advantage for SPS. And uh, now we expect the space next space experiment uh, with satellite or uh, MPT on the moon. So, uh, so this is our expectation. Uh, from here, I would like to introduce our previous uh, around the result of the phase array and the semiconductor technology. So uh, this is a formal roadmap uh, by Japanese government, METI, uh, Ministry of Economy, Trade and Industry uh, in 2017. Uh, at first, uh, Japanese government uh, uh, established uh, right, the basic plan for the space policy. And uh, this is a, a Japanese basic plan uh, for all space technology, but uh, it involves a, a solar power satellite. And uh, uh, based on this basic policy, uh, basic plan for space policy, uh, we studied the new R&D uh, towards the solar power satellites supported by the uh, METI. And uh, through six years, uh, we developed the new phase array and the new semiconductor, and uh, we succeeded the first uh, demonstration on the ground, ground uh, WP, WPT uh, horizontal experiment. And uh, we succeeded uh, in this uh, uh, horizontal uh, long distance WPT experiment. So uh, this is a developed a thin and a right weight phase array uh, antenna with new developed gallium nitride. And uh, we developed a new gallium nitride and uh, MMIC, and uh, we succeeded to reduce the thickness of the phase array uh, from the 30 centimeters to the only 2.5 centimeters. And uh, with this phase array, uh, we succeeded in long distance WPT demonstration in 2015. And uh, as a next step, uh, we try to develop, develop the new uh, phase array and uh, uh, new WPT system uh, to flying drone. And uh, this is named the vertical WPT experiment. And uh, this project was supported by the same METI. And uh, in 2018, uh, we, uh, we uh, again uh, succeeded in this uh, extreme experiment and uh, demonstration. So uh, this is an experimental uh, result of the, uh, this drone uh, experiment in Japan. Uh, we applied the same uh, thin phase array developed in 2015. And uh, from this trans uh, phase array, we transmitted the 1.6 micro power. And uh, at the drone uh, over 30, uh, 30 meters, uh, we received the electric power uh, of the 42 watts. And uh, of course, uh, 42 watt is not enough uh, to fly drone itself, but uh, we supported the, some electricity uh, to charge the battery uh, in drone. And uh, we control the beam direction uh, with very high accuracy. And uh, this experiment was very, uh, uh, succeeded in 2018. And uh, now uh, we keep this R&D uh, supported by Japanese government. And uh, now uh, we are developing the other uh, WPT system. In previous two uh, R&D, we mainly focused on the, to develop the phase array and the micro power, uh, micro power system. But uh, in, uh, in the third step, uh, we added uh, the structure uh, R&D. It means uh, we are developing the sandwich module with a solar cell and a micro power transfer system. Uh, of course, as I told you, uh, solar power satellite is a very huge power station in space and uh, uh, power generation, uh, photovoltaic uh, solar cell is very important. So uh, in consideration with a tether type solar power satellite designed in 2000, uh, 2006, uh, we, uh, we are developing the sandwich module with solar cells and micro power transfer and uh, we would like to uh, apply 
uh, apply it uh, for the more uh, longer distance demonstrations. And uh, this is an uh, ongoing uh, picture and uh, uh, image, uh, image, image illustration uh, of this project uh, in this project. Uh, now uh, we succeeded in a higher uh, efficiency gallium nitride uh, nitride amplifiers. Uh, five years ago, uh, our developed uh, transmitter uh, in this uh, in this around the project uh, achieved uh, 35 uh, over 35 uh, percent uh, as total efficiency. Total means it involves a high power amplifier and a driver amplifier. Uh, beam forming network was etc. And uh, we uh, we reached over seventy percent uh, at the high power amplifier. But uh, when uh, we involve the efficiency of the uh, driver amplifier, uh, total efficiency of the transmitter uh, decreased to the thirty five uh, per thirty five percent. But uh, in just now. Uh, uh, pro, uh, one young professor in University of Electrical Communication is developing a very uh, good uh, good efficiency uh, gallium nitride uh, amplifier, and the uh, total efficiency uh, reached over sixty eight percent, and uh, it involves uh, all uh, conversion efficiency uh, of the high power amplifier, driver amplifier, or the beam forming network, or the etc. So uh, this is a very good and uh, high efficiency garment nitride amplifier. And uh, with this amplifier, uh, the other group uh, is developing the sandwich module uh, with this illustration. So uh, in uh, maybe two or three years later, uh, we can reach the combination of the high power amplifier and uh, uh, solar cell, and uh, we will succeed the, this project. So uh, this is a Japanese uh, ongoing project just now. And uh, now I explain these three stages. And uh, of course, uh, we expect the next step. And uh, as a next step, uh, now uh, we, uh, we consider the space demonstration space experiment again in Japan. But uh, unfortunately, uh, we haven't uh, we haven't uh, uh, get uh, we uh, we didn't uh, receive the, some budget now. So now we are negotiating to the Japanese government, and uh, we would like to uh, carry out the space uh, experiment again uh, with these developed technologies. So uh, this is uh, uh, one example of the proposed satellite experiment. And uh, in uh, AREO, uh, at first, uh, we would like to launch a small satellite with a solar cell and a micro transfer system. And uh, we uh, now uh, we have the two modes. Uh, mode A is a uh, micro transfer from the satellite to the ground. And, uh, but as I told you, uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, received power on the ground will be uh, very small. So uh, we add the mode B, uh, WPT, to sat, uh, from the satellite uh, to the space plasma. And uh, we would like to uh, measure uh, the effect of the uh, microwave power uh, in the ionosphere, ionosphere plasma. And uh, this is uh, one uh, proposal. Uh, uh, to Japanese government now. And uh, in parallel, uh, we are proposing the other WPT uh, experiment on the moon. So as you know, uh, now uh, the world, uh, eyes in the world uh, go, uh, go to the uh, moon now. So we, Japanese government, uh, is very interested in the exper uh, some, uh, some experiment uh, on the moon. So uh, this is uh, one proposal of the micro transfer on the moon, uh, from moon orbit to the uh, moon ground. So uh, moon orbit uh, will be approximately uh, 100 kilometers above, and the uh, possible power will be maybe uh, 500 kilowatts. And uh, in uh, with uh, with these parameters, unfortunately, received power on the ground is very small. But uh, in this case, uh, we must increase the received power on the moon. 
so uh, we propose the very high frequency, for example, 24 gigahertz or 300 gigahertz micro power transfer experiment. And uh, with this uh, uh, higher frequency system, uh, we can uh, uh, we can increase the beam efficiency uh, in 100 kilometers on the moon, and uh, it's enough beam efficiency, I think. And uh, problem is a very low circuit efficiency uh, at uh, 24 gigahertz, as uh, at uh, 30, uh, 300 gigahertz, but. Uh, now, uh, the other Japanese group is developing the rectifier at the 30, uh, 300 gigahertz. And uh, I think we, uh, we can reach the uh, higher efficiency circuit uh, soon. So uh, we keep a negotiation to Japanese government and uh, I'd like to uh, inform you uh, 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 we can get the new space experiment in your future. So uh, this is a Japanese uh, status of the R&D of the solar power satellite now. And uh, from here, uh, I'd like to introduce our Kyoto University's technology. So uh, I don't have enough time, so I have to hurry. And uh, I'd like to introduce our proposed noble beam forming and a noble target detecting technology uh, by phase array. And uh, of course, as you know, uh, if we put the uh, antenna in, just in front, uh, efficiency uh, will be max. And uh, theoretically, we can reach 100% uh, uh, of the beam efficiency. But uh, if uh, target uh, moved to somewhere, unfortunately, efficiency decreases because a uh, uh, micro beam uh, is uh, just in front only. So uh, in this case, uh, we have to uh, uh, we have to control the beam direction and the beam forming, uh, and the target uh, position must be detected. So important technology is a phased array antenna, as I told you, and uh, additionally, target detecting technology is the other important technology. So. Uh, we, uh, in, in our university, uh, we uh, now we propose a noble beam forming technology. So uh, it's a very uh, basic theory to calculate the beam efficiency uh, with uh, free transmission formula. And uh, if uh, we put the antenna in front of our region, uh, we can directly apply the free transmission formula. Plus, uh, free transmission formula to calculate the beam efficiency from transmitting antenna to the receiving antenna. But uh, if uh, we put the beam, uh, uh, receiving antenna in final region, instead of this uh, free transmission formula, uh, we can apply the exact free transmission formula without any assumption of the plane wave. But uh, in, uh, if uh, we choose uh, both, uh, we choose uh, either uh, equation, uh, it's easy to understand uh, when we would like to increase a beam efficiency, uh, this uh, equation, both equation involves only uh, four parameters, uh, lambda, D, and uh, AT, and uh, AR. So it means uh, distance and the antenna aperture and the frequency parameters only. So uh, if we would like to increase a beam efficiency, uh, we have to uh, we have to uh, reduce the uh, uh, distance. Well, we have to apply the larger aperture antenna, and uh, uh, we have to use, apply the higher frequency system. So uh, this is not interesting. So uh, additionally, we have the other technology uh, to increase the beam efficiency. So uh, uh, amplitude that uh, we can apply the amplitude of tapering. For example, Gaussian taper was the other. And uh, solar power satellite, uh, almost all solar power satellites uh, adopted, uh, adopted the Gaussian tapering. And uh, additionally, uh, we have a phase dial technology and uh, we can control the phase and the amplitude in each antenna element. So uh, we propose the optimization technology uh, of the phase and the amplitude to increase the beam efficiency. So um, one of my students proposed the noble flat top beam uh, in radiative near field uh, for, uh, for region. So of course, 
Gaussian beam is a very good uh, beam. Uh, uh, Gaussian beam is a very good uh, microwave beam to increase the beam efficiency only. But uh, in near field, uh, we have the uh, amplitude tapering at the receiving antenna. And uh, in this case, uh, as you know, a rectina, a rectifying circuit has a uh, characteristic of the uh, RFDC conversion efficiency uh, with uh, input power dependence. So at the center, if at the center of the beam, uh, re rectina receives the uh, uh, optimum power, uh, efficiency will be maximum. But uh, at the edge of the antenna, for example, around here, uh, uh, if uh, we put the same uh, rectangles, uh, efficiency degrees in near field case. So uh, we propose a flat top beam uh, like this figure. Uh, when uh, we apply this flat top beam in near field, uh, 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 power density at the receiver will be approximately the uh, same. So it means uh, our RFD uh, DC conversion efficiency uh, will be uh, optimized and uh, maximized. So uh, we propose this flat top beam, and uh, with this uh, equation and with this optimi uh, optimization uh, method, uh, we will create the flat top beam in your field. And uh, this is uh, one, two example of the optimized flat top beam. And uh, this is a front, uh, front, uh, front beam pattern. And uh, this is a offset beam pattern at, uh, for example, uh, 50 meters uh, right side. And uh, in both case, uh, even if uh, we control the beam direction, uh, we can uh, create the flat top beam in near field. This is uh, one example. So uh, we Kyoto University propose this flat top beam uh, in near field to increase both beam efficiency and uh, RFDC conversion efficiency at the receiver rectangular arrays. So additionally, uh, the other, uh, my student uh, proposed the novel uh, DOE direction of arrival uh, uh, method in friendly regions. And uh, as you know, uh, there are a lot of uh, good technology of the DOA, beamformer, Capon, Music, Esprit, or the other. And, uh, but uh, all, uh, all methods involve pros and cons. So uh, in, my, uh, in my university, my student proposed the combination technology of the near field DOE matrix and Esprit method. And uh, with this uh, new uh, proposed new uh, technology of the DOE, uh, we can uh, we can reduce the uh, uh, error of the uh, target detection, like this figure. So uh, this is one example uh, for uh, uh, target detection. But uh, we Kyoto University is proposing the novel technology for beam forming and uh, uh, target detection uh, in near future. So uh, this is our Kyoto University's technology, recent Kyoto University's technology. So uh, this is my conclusion. So uh, as you know, this is a, a famous uh, speech by John F. Kennedy in uh, 1962, uh, we choose to go to the moon. So this is a moon speech. So I hope uh, I would, uh, this is a very excellent speech. So uh, this is a, <coughs> So this is a very, very good and important speech uh, for all engineers. So uh, based on the, this uh, moon speech, uh, I would like to conclude my talk with the, this word. Uh, this is a SPS speech in WPW. So we choose to build solar bus satellite and uh, we choose to start to build solar bus satellite in this decade. So, uh, so this is our hope and uh, this is our uh, future, I think. So if you are interested in the solar power satellite project, so please join uh, my dream. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, this, is my, uh, this is my last talk. Thank you very much.